Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sid Rep. Today we are joined by New Hampshire's Deputy Adjutant General Warren Perry, the Director of State Veteran Cemeteries Sean Buck, the Divisional Director of Community-Based Military Programs Brent Frazier, and the Divisional Director of Veteran Services William Goodrow. But before we discuss veterans' benefits in New Hampshire, do us a favor and hit that like button and subscribe, which helps the Sit Rep with connecting veterans with the benefits they have earned and deserve. Warren, thanks so much for joining us on the Sit Rep today. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. And so, for the people that are in the audience right now that might not be familiar with the state of New Hampshire, and it's the Department of Veterans Services, right? Well, it's the Department of Military Affairs and Veterans Services. So okay. this is the title we have. And we, we distinctly made uh, sure that we separated ourselves from any confusion that there, we might be the VA. So we have Military Affairs and Veterans Services in our title. That's kind of why we chose that. I know that must happen a lot. They come to you for federal benefits, which you guys can help out with, right? Absolutely. That's one of the things we do is, uh, you know, Mr. Gaudreau, we'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, that we connect people to those benefits that they've earned by virtue of their service, whether they're federal or state benefits. So as I understand it, your, your department is similar to the Department of Veterans Affairs on the federal side, um, but understanding that, what services do you guys offer exactly? So I think it's, it's important to say that uh, very, very recently in the state of New Hampshire, we had a change, right? So we had a, uh, there wasn't one single place that we could, that veterans could go and find services. So back in 2019, uh, the governor, along with the state legislature, decided to create the department. And we merged into the department, the Division of Veteran Services, run by Mr. Gaudreau, and the Division of Community-Based Military Programs. We already were administering the cemetery. So those are the th that's how we're made up. Relatively new in about 2019 that that happened. So, you know, what, what you'll find is the Division of Veteran Services, what they really do is they connect veterans – to those services that they've earned by virtue of their service, whether they're federal benefits or state benefits. About 90% of their work really is about helping veterans process their VA claims. So that's really where a bill shines. Uh, what I tell veterans when they, when they talk to me is I ask them if they've, you know, are they connected to the VA? Are they, do they have a VA claim in? Are they connected to services? And if they say no, I say, well, look, if you're going to do that, get an advocate. And Bill is that advocate for them. You know, they may process one or two VA claims or, a, or an appeal in their life. You know, that bill does 30 a day. So it's really important for them to go. The Division of Community-Based community -based Military Programs, you know, where that Brent runs, really, they husband all of the community programs that may offer services or resources to veterans. So he really isn't a veteran-facing organization. He really is kind of herding the cats to make sure that if anybody provides services to veterans, that they are pulling the rope all in the same direction. And that's really what his his job is. And really in New Hampshire, it's important to, to note that everything happens in a grassroots level, kind of a small state. You know, everybody pulls themselves up by their bootstraps. So being able to coordinate community resources, whether they're private resources, nonprofit resources, or business resources, to have them all pulling in the same direction to help veterans, really, really important. And then the third thing that we do is we run the Veteran Cemetery, which is one of the most important benefits that we have to recognize and honor the service of, of veterans in New Hampshire. So those are the that's really kind of the the biggest three things, the biggest three rocks. Now so I, I guess it's become easier then. It's basically one-stop shopping now. There's yes. one location at least where somebody can go and get pointed in the other directions yes. as, as may need be. That, that, that's the way we look at it, right? So, But we also have kind of a many-door concept. So no matter what door you enter, you can find the services right. that we have here. So not only is there one, one belly button that we can push to make sure that veterans are getting taken care of, but there are also many ways to enter into that system, many doors. No wrong door is one of the one of the things that we say in New Hampshire. So yes, that's that's a good way to look at it. So one place to go. And I think for for those people who are needing assistance, if they reach out to their state legislature or they reach out to the governor's office, the governor has one belly button he can push, and that's the adjutant general who is also in charge of the National Guard in the state of New Hampshire. So he's kind of dual hatted in that role. And so before we get into the different divisions uh, with some of the gentlemen that have joined you, uh, Bill, Brent, and Sean, and I understand that Bill's going to probably speak more about this, uh, but I know it's something that's really important to you and to your department, and that's claim sharks. What do we have to say about claim sharks? So I, I, think, I think it's important that veterans know that they can get these services for free. 
And if it should be a red flag for them if anybody is going to charge them any percentage of any claim that's awarded right. by the VA or charge them for services to get connected with the VA and get their claims processed. That's a real, to me, if, if that, that should be the first biggest red flag that, that veterans have when they're trying to navigate this process. We all know it's a complicated process. The VA is a big system and they have rules we have to follow. They sh veterans should have an advocate. But those services are provided for free, either by the Division of Veteran Services or by any of the veteran service organizations that have certified veteran service officers. The, you know, the VFW, the American Legion, the DAV, they all have qualified expert veteran service officers that can help them get connected to those benefits that they've earned without cost. And, uh, you know, I had, I had the... the the pleasure of sitting in a meeting with the with the secretary of the VA a couple of months ago, and uh, he talked about claim charts and how important it is for for us to educate veterans about them and those reporting uh, requirements if they think they're being sharked or they think they're being taken uh, uh, advantage of as they process their claims. So, with veterans, you know, first the first thing is it's a red flag if somebody's trying to charge you, no doubt about it. The second thing is if you think you're being uh, you know, charge for something you shouldn't be charged for, you need to report it. And we can help you report that. We can be a sensor for you and we can help get those those people to stop what they're doing, that predatory activity. So that's a recommendation to contact your yep. department. Absolutely. You guys will help. Absolutely. We'll help. First of all, we'll help report the, the activity, the claim shark activity. Second of all, we'll get you the services for free. I think that's a critical point that many veterans feel, especially in the appeal process. You shouldn't be paying part of your claim to get your claim. And that's correct. And and our guys are experts. I mean, we we touch about about 3,000, well, about 2,500 veterans a month we touch um, in Bill's department. You know, whether it's an email or a phone call, we generally process or, or meet with veterans about 125, somewhere between 125 and 200 times a month in terms of appointments. They're really good at their job. They know what needs to be on the claims. They know how to get the to make sure that we're maximizing the benefits that have been earned for those veterans. And we don't need to hire somebody and pay for that. We have like rehearsed, trained, experienced experts that can get that done for you for free. Warren, I thank you so much for making the trip down. I think we're going to start diving into the various benefits you guys provide. Yeah, we're really proud of our team in New Hampshire. And uh, we hope this is, uh, you know, this educational process that uh, you're, you're giving us an opportunity to reach out to all the veterans and let them know what we do. So we really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. So Bill, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, if, if you can, before we dive into some of the nuances of what it is that your division or department does, uh, at a macro level, what is what is your part of military affairs and veterans services all about? Uh, thank you very very much for the invite uh, for for this. Um, we're the veteran services piece of that. So, with Department of Military Affairs and Veteran Services, we're the veteran services piece. Um, and our target and our goal and our mission is to help veterans and their spouses uh, and their family members connect with services they've earned through their service. Uh, and that could be federal services, it could be local services. And so you just, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's state or federal or what have you, you guys are willing to step in and help them out? Correct. Um, I mean, there are obviously some things we do really good and other things that, you know, for example, legal services is not something we, we offer. We're not legals. We're not lawyers. We don't have any lawyers assigned to the, the agency. So if you're coming for a legal service or like a will or something like that, we would have to direct you to, to the community to, for, for those types of services. So like I said, there are things that we do really good and there are things that we, you know, we have to direct people out back out into the community for. So Bill, talk to us about property tax exemptions in New Hampshire for veterans, their, their family members, you know, what can they expect? What should they be looking for? Uh, yeah, so they, we do have property taxes for veterans. Um, the property tax credits, there's multiple types of credits that we have within the state. Uh, there's the standard tax credit, uh, there's an all veterans tax credit, and then there's the tax credits for the permanent total uh, disabled veterans. Um, the standard tax credits up to $750 the all veterans tax credits also up to 750 and then the uh, permanent total tax credit is up to 4000 those tax credits really dependent some of them are depending on where you live in the state as to what the what the dollar amount will be i highly recommend anybody who's looking to move into the state of new hampshire maybe looking for a place to live and maybe doesn't have a, a specific place they're looking for and they're shopping around to go onto the department of revenue administration's website 
and look at the tax credits that are being offered so they can find out what cities offer the highest tax credits. So I think that's an important point um, in that it's not a once over state of New Hampshire tax credit. It's each each individual city and town kind of applies their own piece of that. Right. And you have to know where you're going to live or where you're living. And then that's help, that dictates what that credit may or may not be. Right. And for like, for example, the permanent total tax credit, it's a big deal. Um, that's anywhere from $750 to $4,000. So it is a big deal to know where you're going to be moving, whether or not that town recognizes and acknowledges the maximum of the benefit. What about educational benefits? Are there any educational benefits that exist for veteran service members or maybe even their dependents? Uh, certainly. I mean, so uh, veterans coming out of the military, they have access to their GI Bill, you know, Montgomery GI Bill, post 9-11, those things. Of course, you can always access those through the states and, and, the, and the schools are willing to accept those benefits, specifically when the state of New Hampshire, as far as coming from taxpayer dollars, we offer uh, benefits to the children of veterans who are 100% permanently totally disabled. And those would be uh, basically tuition and some um some financial benefits like a like a stipend for those that are going to state schools. So it's only state schools, the, the state paid for schools, UNH, Keene State, uh, Granite State College, s schools like that that are paid for uh, by the state. What about types of um, employment assistance that are offered to veterans uh, or, their, or their families? From the perspective of veteran services from the agency, we don't do much when it comes to employment. I do get contacted quite frequently by employers looking to employ veterans. And then I get in contact by veterans, in some cases, looking for employment. And we direct them to the state's New Hampshire employment security system. Within that system, they do have at each of the employment security offices, they do have staff members there that are trained to help veterans. Uh, they have disabled uh, veterans, uh, staff members that help disabled veterans find appropriate positions for them. So we rely on the state's New Hampshire, the New Hampshire Employment Security System to, to help that. Uh, and I know a benefit that a lot of states offer, and I'm assuming that New Hampshire probably also offers is with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what kind of things can veterans and their families expect from the DMV? It's really dependent. Uh, a lot of our benefits, uh, benefits are dependent on the veteran and service discharge level and maybe what disabilities that you have. Uh, for just your average veteran coming out of the military, we have veterans plates. So uh, you drive around the state, you'll see the V plate. Uh, in addition to the V plate, we also have decal plates where you can get a decal from your service. So if you're an army, you can army decal um, that you can place on the plate. So we have those plates specifically for the generic everyday average veteran. Then we have the plates for veterans who are permanently totally disabled, uh, where they get to get a uh, disabled placard for their vehicle. And there's also, uh, from the perspective of DMV, if you're 100% permanently totally disabled, there's also the possibility to get uh, one vehicle registered for free. What types of benefits does New Hampshire offer uh, in regards to like recreation, hunting, fishing, you know, whitewater rafting, skiing? Right. Again, like I stated before, uh, most of our benefits are really going to be dependent on on the level of discharge. Uh, but we have access to to state parks. Um, we have access to fishing, um, reduced costs for fishing licenses, hunting licenses. And again, but a lot of those do depend on the status of your your dis disabilities. Um, so I highly recommend for most of our state benefits to go to our website, uh, the DMAVS website, which which www.dmavs dot new hampshire dot gov and surf around that go to veteran services part of that website and it does break out all of the state's benefits so i was pouring through uh your website and i noticed a benefit that probably very few veterans in new hampshire know about uh and that is the fact that you guys have bonuses correct so the state offers uh passed through legislation a hundred dollar bonus for those who served in uh, vietnam those who served in um, the post the post 9-11 Gulf War, uh, and also those who were in support of the global war on terrorism. Um, that is administered through the state, but the applications come through my office. So uh, again, if you go to our website, you'll find the application on the website. So fill out an application, get it to my office, and we'll go ahead and get it submitted to the state for you. And we will make sure to have that website linked in the video description below. So does New Hampshire have veteran service officers in each of the cities and towns or in the in the counties and, and what are their duties and how can they assist veterans? So 
<clears throat> I, I like to establish the who's who in the zoo when I talk to veterans and when it comes to veteran services and organizations that do what we do. Uh, so it's important to understand that in the state, we have the standard national organizations. We've got the American Legion, the VFW, the DAV. They have service officers that will help veterans. We are state level, so we work for the governor and our service officers. We vary a little bit from the national level folks in that I have service officers that are planted at locations throughout the state, whereas the national level service officers are all located in Manchester. So the veterans have to travel to Manchester to get their services. So my service officers, I have a service officer out in Keene. I have a service officer down in Nashua. I have one out in Portsmouth. I have two in Manchester, two in Concord that also service the North Country to include Berlin, Conway, Littleton, and Groveton. So we are we are embedded in the community, and we are we are in the state. And I know this will kind of speak to uh, what Warren had spoken about earlier, uh, with regard to people that are trying to, uh, well, essentially claim sharks. What is it that your department is able to provide, or what they're able to assist with? So, pretty much everything that those the sharks will be able to provide for you, we provide as well. So the biggest difference between us and them is we're not charging for that service. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of those organizations, they try to get veterans into their organization through false advertising. Uh, one of the things they advertise is they can get veterans claims through the system faster. And that's just simply not possible. Uh, the VA has a process and every veteran goes through that process and they don't look at who is the representative and go, oh, this is this company that's charging veterans. We need to get their claim done faster. No. So your claim's not going to get done any faster if you utilize one of these companies. In addition, they'll also claim that they're more successful uh, than, than a lot of the free service officers. And that's simply not true either. Um, we have our service officers are accredited. They're trained. They're they're educated. They've been through the process, many of them on their own for their own claims. So they're well-versed and well-experienced in how to do this. Um, some of the, the ones out there that charge, they try to skirt around the, the, the recent law. The recent law is that you have to be an accredited uh, organization to do work for veterans. Um, and a lot of them skirt around that by offering life coaching. And a part of life coaching, they give you videos on how to do your claim. And they're charging exorbitant amounts of money to do this. To do this, so it's just—I mean, the process is a long process. It's a—it's a hard process. Um, and when you're successful and you get that retro, I, for me, I would like that retro to go to you uh, and not to some company. And, and in many cases, the claim may have already been started by a person that's not charging. Then you get involved in this company that is charging, and they've literally done nothing, and that claim will get adjudicated. Now they're going to take half. In some cases, so it's just, it's just not a right, the right move, not the right way to go. So again, every state has an office like mine. Every state is required to have a veteran services. They call them different things. Go to your veteran services, and if, and if you have a bad service officer, and that's possible, there's it's possible to get a bad service officer. Maybe someone who's burnt out. Maybe somebody who's been doing the job for a long time. Fire them and get a new service officer. There's plenty of us that do this for free in the state. You don't have to be stuck with one individual. And I, I welcome anybody who's come to my agency and maybe didn't get the satisfaction that they they were looking for to go to one of the other agencies that do what we do, but again, for free. So if, if I'm living in New Hampshire and I'm a veteran and I want to submit a claim, and you know, I have no idea how to do it. I know the VA is a is a complicated process. I can call your office, and depending on where I live, you'll direct me either to your office or to an office throughout the state, uh, and that person will help walk me through submitting my claim for disability compensation. That's right. okay, right. and and for free, and and, for free. and you're not looking for a check or anything. Or, and to take it that step further than that, we're <laughs> also your advocate through the entire process. So if you are getting a letter from the VA that you don't understand, they do write a lot of confusing letters, um, and you've got questions about that letter, you can reach out to your service officer and your service officer can answer those questions. Additionally, if you get your decision back and you're not happy with your decision and you wish to appeal, we also provide services for appeals. We also provide help with the appeals process. A lot of people unfortunately think they need a lawyer in right. the appeals process, and that's just not true. In fact, the, the process of a VA law judge appeal is so unlawyerly, you don't need a lawyer. In fact, unfortunately, a lot of lawyers wind up talking veterans out, legally talking veterans out of claims because they try to pr approach it as if it's a standard legal process, and it's not. 
the VA law judge that that we meet with when we do these claims, their job is to ensure the VA didn't violate the law, right? So the VA has to has to obey law, and that law is 38 CFR. And those judges have to make sure the VA didn't violate the law. It's non-adversarial. You don't need a lawyer for that process. Yeah, I can attest myself. I've been to one of those claims hearings for myself, and it was very, very low key. Low key. Yes. It was some questions. I mean, you, I could, I just had the feeling that the judge really wanted to ensure that uh, she had all the information to make sure she understood my claim and and could make a decision. Yeah, I was not adversarial. I didn't feel like I was under a microscope or anything along those lines. So it's great that you guys provide that service because it is daunting and a lot of veterans are led to believe that, oh, if you don't have a lawyer, you're, you're just going to be thrown to the wolves and you're not getting anything. That's correct. And so for veterans and family members that are in the state of New Hampshire, What's the best thing for them to do to contact your office? How do they do it? So the way, when, I, when I'm out doing, when I, I do presentations throughout the state. Um, you know, I, I, I hear this phrase a lot when I deal with the veteran world, and that is, I got a veteran who's fallen through the cracks. I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe fall, veterans fall through the cracks. I believe veterans, I believe veterans benefits is like this giant umbrella. We need to figure out how to get that veteran under the umbrella. So there's a variety of different benefits and a variety of different ways of doing that. If the individual is looking out and call, contacting me for, for benefits, I would say in a lot of cases, they can start contacting me directly for a question. And if at the end of that question, I believe there's some services to be provided, I'll direct them in how to get that done, right? So for example, if it's just a simple question um, about whether or not somebody can apply, maybe they have a PAC Act related question, they can absolutely contact me and I'll give them the the, the 30,000 foot level, let them know uh, whether or not I, I believe based on what they're saying, they, they're qualifying or will qualify. Um, and then at that point, if I believe that there's a, uh, a, a need for them to meet with a service officer, we'll go ahead and get that scheduled through our secretary uh, and get them out in wherever it's convenient for them in the state. Awesome. Well, Bill, thanks so much for coming in on the show. Um, and for all you guys out in the audience, guys and gals, uh, check out the video description below. We'll have links, phone numbers, everything that you need in order to get in touch with Bill and his team. All right. So, Brent, thanks for uh, making the drive down and joining us on the SITREP. Absolutely. Uh, it is great to be here. What is New Hampshire's community-based military programs? We're a relatively small organization within the State Department. Uh, it's made up of about uh, six people, uh, but it's a small team that really uh, punches above its weight across a number of different programs in support of service members, veterans, and their families. And what kind of, I mean, what kind of services is it that the division provides? There are a number of different services uh, that the team works uh, with across a number of different uh, teams, uh, ranging from uh, employment services uh, to well-being, both mental and physical well-being, uh, to veteran-friendly businesses, to suicide prevention. Uh, we're also in the process of standing up a position that will work with veterans on uh, educational benefits and working with colleges and universities, as well as some of the more non traditional uh, vocational and training schools. It sounds like a really wraparound service. Kind yeah, right. Of yeah. Yeah, there really are quite a, a few different uh, initiatives and programs uh, across the, the division. Uh, and, and it also comes with uh, largely because we're relatively small in stature, uh, but working with teams and stakeholders from across the state. Uh, and that could be the Department of Health and Human Services on ending veteran homelessness. Uh, that could be the Office of Professional Licensure and Certification working to get credit for military on their experiences in the service. So the benefits you've just spoken about, um, are they available to the veterans' family members, so spouse or dependent children, or how does that work? No, that's another great question. And the, the short answer is, is it probably depends on the situation, but I'd tell you that most of the programs and initiatives that we work are available to the, the service members or the, or the veterans' spouses. Now, each case is going to be different uh, because of whether it's the, the federal uh, laws and statutes that we're dealing with or perhaps uh, the state level, but the majority of the, the programs and initiatives uh, that we work with uh, are 
uh, eligible for uh, the family members. And whether you're talking about uh, support for the uh, GI Bill benefits um, and availability there to, to spouses and, and children, uh, or perhaps some of the uh, initiatives that we're working with um, New Hampshire Employment Security and the Office of uh, Professional Licensure and, and Certification uh, towards getting credit for uh, service members' experience, uh, such as uh, working from troops to trucks or uh, Kevlar to leather or working uh, towards some of the, the, the medical uh, credit experiences. Uh, a number of those uh, efforts are, are also available to the, the family member. You just kind of have to, to give us a call and, and, and we can sort through the specifics. To figure out what I'm looking for and what you have that may fit my need or and then direct me to where I need to go. A absolutely. Again, there, there are so many programs and, and initiatives and, and resources available across the state. Uh, a good place to start uh, would be with our, our website. And honestly, you probably just have to Google uh, New Hampshire and, and DMAVs, Department of Military Affairs and Veteran Services. Uh, we've got a, a calendar there. We've got training resources. Uh, we've got resources uh, that address a, a a number of different uh, initiatives, uh, and, and that's a good place to start. And uh, if you've got a question, once you go there, just uh, reach out and we can get you headed to the right place because there's a number of different lines of effort. Uh, and there's always uh, great support from across the state uh, and uh, as well as across uh, the VA and Department of Labor uh, for veterans to, to be able to, to share uh, resources uh, for our veterans. And so one of the programs that you had spoken about earlier was the Veteran Friendly Business uh, Program. Uh, could use or network, yeah. right? Yeah, it's so it's the uh, the official name is the uh, New Hampshire Veteran Friendly Business Network, and it's it's a great program and initiative. It started about four years ago. Uh, it started uh, as part of efforts uh, with the New Hampshire military leadership team and with some of the the businesses in our state, New Hampshire Employment Security as well, uh, and they developed a program that would recognize the businesses across the Granite State that really uh, demonstrated a positive positive impact on the recognition of the service members and the, the veterans service, uh, both in terms of uh, the time that they were in uniform, but also now that they are uh, now that they've transitioned from the military uh, into the civilian world. And so this program, we're now at about 70 or so uh, businesses from across the state. And it, it's pretty interesting that the range of businesses, everything from uh, the huge traditional Sig Sauer's, BAE's, the larger companies down to mom and pop stores like uh, Hart's Turkey Farm uh, up in Meredith. Uh, and and it, it, it's an opportunity to match uh, the New Hampshire businesses' uh, needs in terms of employ employment uh, with uh, our veterans, uh, what they're looking for in terms of a rewarding and, and gainful uh, uh, job or a position after they transition out of uniform. Uh, a number of different uh, uh, benefits on, on both sides for both the uh, the industry, for the business, as, as well as for the veteran. And we do our best to, to try to match the two of those to, to together. We're currently working with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to, uh, as they uh, have a program called Hiring Our Heroes and matching that with DOD Skill Bridges program. And so that you have the pipeline of the, the people who are transitioning from the military uh, out into the civilian world and now to, to link them with our New Hampshire veteran friendly business network but it's it's a great program all right so if, if i'm a service member and it sounds like great programs and i'm leaving the military and i'm moving back to new hampshire or planning to live in new hampshire um what's the best what are my best options to get in contact with you to see you know trend the transition assistance that may be there and, and how i can get plugged in no absolutely and you'd be making a great decision by moving to new hampshire choose <laughs> new hampshire uh there's a, a lot of great reasons uh why you'd want to come back but so uh it starts really as you start the the transition process when you're still in uniform uh and the department participates in the u.s department of labor's uh, transition assistance programs so we support their outreach and we go up and provide overviews at uh, the respective TAPS, the uh, Transition Assistance Programs. We also uh, reach out to those people who have selected. So if you've decided that you want to come back to the state of New Hampshire, uh, we uh, reach out to each of those uh, individual service members and we provide an overview of these are some of the things going on right now that would benefit you as a veteran. And that includes going back to the discussion on New Hampshire Veteran Friendly Business, uh, if they're hiring for specific positions, if the Department of Transportation is hiring, particularly in the winter 
wintertime, if you think about all the work that they're doing to keep the roads clear, maybe it's the Department of Safety and the state troopers have got an examination coming up in March and they're looking to bring on 50 new troopers. Uh, we include that type of information. So uh, we reach out to the, the individuals coming back. Uh, as you start the process back, as you've transitioned out and, and you're, you're no longer in uniform and you're in the state, there are a lot of great programs within New Hampshire Employment Security that we would love to be able to, to set you up with and they'll link you with a case manager to help you on your journey. It's not an easy one and it's not one that you have to go through alone. There's a lot of resources out there. You just really have to ask. If I'm an organization or a business in the state of New Hampshire and I want to become more involved in the transition process or employment or anything like that to benefit veterans, is it you that I contact? It would be our office, absolutely. You could reach out to me, and, and we've got a, a great program lead that just started this past fall, uh, Miss Erica Webb, uh, and we'll work with you on the application process. We're in the process of uh, uh, simplifying the the uh, the application, but we'll walk you through it. Uh, as I said, we're we're up to about seventy businesses. Uh, businesses, veteran service organizations, educational institutions, um, and then we'll bring you on board. And as part of that effort, uh, uh, and the application process is free. Uh, we do monthly lunch and learns. Uh, we do uh, in a, in a, webinar, a webinar type uh, series. Uh, we've got a monthly newsletter. We've got a LinkedIn uh, account specifically for the New Hampshire veterans, uh, friendly businesses. And so if, if you reach out, we'll get you on the, the right path to, to get you there. Awesome. Well, Brent, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and a lot of what Brent talked about, phone numbers, web links, even the LinkedIn account, we'll have links to all that stuff in the video description below, so check it out. So, Sean, thanks for joining us on the SITREP uh, to discuss uh, a really important benefit mm -hmm. that exists in the state of New Hampshire, and that's burial benefits. Um, so if you could, um, you know, it's, how many cemeteries does New Hampshire have, where are they located, and what are people's options uh, for being buried there and, and what have you? So the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery is located in Bosco in New Hampshire. There's only one. We're, we're a small state. It's relatively in the middle. In terms of population, it is in the middle of the state. Um, open to anybody. The, we don't have any kind of residency requirement. Any veteran can apply for internment at the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. Our, our little saying is, if you want to spend your eternity in New Hampshire, we don't blame you. <laughs> um, and uh, we offer, so it's eligible for all veterans and their dependents. So spouses can also be interred at the Veterans Cemetery. Typically, they would be interred with the veteran in the same plot. The only time that we reserve a spot is if both spouses are veterans. So then we would, they, they have the choice to be in adjacent locations. That's the only reservations we take. Otherwise we just go in order. We have three types of interments, full casket interment, in-ground cremated remains, or in a columbarium wall. The columbarium wall, for lack of a better word, is kind of like those giant postal boxes and right. the urn goes right into the box. Uh, and so the, the urns would go, spouses go in the same, in the same box or in the same plot on the ground. One of the funny questions I get all the time is they walk through the cemetery. We have headstones. We have upright granite headstones. And some of them are closer together. They're only four feet apart. And people say, how does the casket fit? They're like, because they're not a casket. They're, they're urns. Uh, you know, so when the headstones are closer together, those are cremation plots. And when they're farther apart, those are where the full casket areas are. So that's essentially what we uh, offer the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. And one thing I tell people, and probably the most important thing, apply. If you're a veteran, if you served in any service, uh, the, any branch of the military, guard, reserves, active, it doesn't matter. Put in an application, give us your paperwork, and let us determine if you're eligible. Don't self-select out. If this is a benefit that you've earned. It's the last, we, met, we talked earlier, it's the last benefit that you'll use, and you should take advantage of it because mm -hmm. there is no cost to the veteran to be buried at the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery or any any uh, veteran cemetery in the country. So I think that's an important point you just, you know, kind of at the end there, and that is cost. I mean, it it's not cheap to to bury a loved one. Um, so talk in terms of, so the, I'm, everything's free. So the headstone, the plot, you know, all of that is at no cost to the veteran. What about their spouse or dependent children if they're, if they're buried with the veteran? That's a good question. Um, one thing I want to make sure is clear there, we don't get involved in any of the pre-cemetery stuff. So right. We still need to work with a funeral home to do all that, the cremation, all that other stuff. That is something separate from us. But you're right. The 
the honors, the use of our facilities, the headstone, the opening and closing of the pot. There's no cost for, cost for any of that stuff for the veteran. We at the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery do charge $350 for a non-veteran interment. And that's due at the time of interment. We don't accept any early payments. It's just something that is paid at the, on the day of burial. Th that just helps us cover some of the costs for the state. Really, the, w the way that the cemetery is able to operate is when a veteran is buried, we get a, a stipend from the VA for each veteran burial that helps run the cemetery. So the way state veteran cemeteries work is we're federally funded. So when we do an expansion or we build new columbariums or a new, the federal, we apply to the federal government, the Fed veteran cemetery grants program, they give us the money. The state of New Hampshire's portion is they pay for all of our salaries, all of our employees, our state employees, and they cover any additional costs that aren't covered by the VA through their expansions or through their plot allowances. And then we also, like I said, we collect $350 for non-veteran interments. So Sean, we were speaking a little bit before we started the podcast, uh, and you were telling me that uh, through legislation, there's actually a new big change as of recent um, that is going to affect a lot of veterans, especially veterans in New Hampshire, because New Hampshire has tons of National Guard and Reservists. Correct. Can you speak to that legislation, please? Yeah, super proud of this. So in 2022, in March, uh, President Biden signed an order that uh, it's called the Burial Equity for Guards and Reserves, which allows state and tribal veteran cemeteries to make the decision, if the state so chooses, to inter members of the Guard and Reserves. Prior to that, folks that would serve in the National Guard or the Army, or the, any of the military reserve components that were never activated, and did not retire, they were not eligible. They weren't considered veterans. They did not earn this benefit. With this change in the law, with burial equity, the state of New Hampshire, and I'm proud of our state, we led this charge, our legislators, our governor, they led this charge to make it so that members of the Guard and Reserves can be buried in the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. There's a little bit different process. They have to prove how long they're for, for in our state, and every state can set their own rules, but in New Hampshire, they have to complete their first term of enlistment and having a discharge that isn't dishonorable. So basically a, an honorable or a general discharge and you're eligible as long as you complete your first term of service and you can prove that, then we give them that benefit. We do not get any stipend from the federal government for that, the state of New Hampshire covers it. So there's still no cost to the veteran and there's still a $350 fee for the non-veteran. The other caveat to this is this, we do not have a state residency requirement. We will bury anybody from any state in the union who served in the, from anywhere, as long as they served in the United States military and they're eligible. But for members who only served in the Guard and Reserve, you have to be a New Hampshire resident when you pass. And then there's no cost in $350. If you're not a New Hampshire resident, we will still inter you, but there is a fee for that equivalent to what this, the federal stipend is at that time. At, at this moment, it's $950. So it'd be $950 for the veteran and $950 for the spouse. But um, yeah, that program, since we started it, we, we did our first interment on June 9th of 2022, and we've buried 73 members of the Guard and Reserves in the New That's Hampshire fantastic. State Cemetery. Because that is a big, big change that even the federal government doesn't currently uh, recognize. Correct. You know, those guards and reservists who, you know, like we were talking earlier, maybe served 10, 12 years, you know, and during the Cold War, never deployed. Correct. You know, so don't have that active duty DD-214 or what have you, and didn't retire from the Guard or Reserves, uh, but they basically qualify for no benefits. But now they, you know, they can be buried in New Hampshire um, if they so choose. That, that's that's a fantastic and benefit. We, we treat them the same. There's not, as people always will come in, is there a special area? Well, I get this question all the time. Are the Army there or the Navy there? No, we're, we're very egalitarian. We just bury next. Rank doesn't matter to us. Branch of service doesn't matter to us. Now that we've added burial equity, folks, so members of the Guard, they just go right next. And for us, the way we do it, if you served, it, for example, the Army National Guard, your headstone just says Army. We don't, we don't say you were in the National Guard or you were in the Reserves, Army or Navy. So we're, again, we're really proud of that. We do our best to, to try to treat, they deserved it. They earned it. And in our state, there's not, there's not a lot of active duty presence in New Hampshire. Right. So m most people, if you see somebody in uniform, they are either in the guard or the reserves, or they're at least associated with the guard or reserves other than recruiters, I guess. But um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's nothing but a positive for our state and for our citizens. That's fantastic. And so if a veteran has already been buried prior to this law, mm -hmm. Are they able to contact you and say, hey, you know, 
we would really love for our loved one, our veteran, to be buried at the veteran cemetery opposed to where they currently are. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Um, so whether it's active, no matter what, if you're a veteran and you're and you want to apply. Even if that veteran's already passed, if the family member wants to put in the paperwork, they can disinter from whatever wherever they're at and have them interred in the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. Again, each situation is unique, but that ha it happens more than you'd think. Um, people move their loved ones from a civilian cemetery. Some people move from one other veteran. Th their family moves and they move their loved one from a veteran cemetery in Florida to New Hampshire or from this happens pretty regularly throughout the year. Um, and every now and again, somebody leaves the New Hampshire Veterans Cemetery to go to some other cemetery. But yeah, absolutely. So if there's a somebody who wasn't eligible before, was turned down, and they buried, they're buried they buried someone else, that family can certainly apply and disinter those remains and bury them in the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery, certainly. So is do you guys have the pre-need burial approval? You know, so that, yeah. you know, I don't want to say it's a reservation, but it's it it's is. similar to a reservation. No, it is. A Your res name is already at the cemetery and all the funeral home director has to do is reach out when Absolutely. that day comes. The majority. So we have about 10,900 veteran pre-approved applications in our files right now. So, in fact, I encourage everyone do it. I When people come to visit the cemetery, I'm always, I say, you should apply if you're a veteran of the Guard, Reserves, Active. It doesn't matter to me. Apply get this off the checklist and now you know you're covered and tell your family and in particular i want want folks to do it before they get a bad diagnosis or they're sick or something you know because if that happens you don't want to go to the cemetery and you kind of want to focus in on what you got to do so i tell people i've already done it i am already applied and my wife and i and our kids know and i encourage anybody get it done and over with we will save your reservation tell your family that that's what you want and then it's really a simple phone call to us the the other thing we're really proud of in new hampshire is you don't have to wait we don't have some of the, some cemeteries you might have to wait two or three months to get uh, an interment appointment not with us i mean in general we can schedule sometimes as quick as the next day we prefer not to do that but oftentimes we can do that so yeah for sure apply in advance pre pre application is highly encouraged but not required if, if a loved one passes and then you decide to inter them just get us the paperwork we'll process it quickly and so get it taken care of i think another important point is you know somebody a family member passes away and now the people are making um you know making the plans and mm -hmm. such and oh i think grandpa or whatever was a veteran uh, what's the best way for them? Is it, is it to have the funeral home reach out to you? I'm assuming you guys have very good relationships with all the different funeral yeah. homes. So, I mean, the funeral home can reach out to you then on behalf of the family and and go through what needs to happen in order to have the loved one, uh, you know, I don't want to say last minute, but it is pretty much yeah. at the at the end. Yeah, yeah no, it, it doesn't matter to us. We work with families directly all the time or we work with funeral homes. Either one is fine with us. I always tell people, a lot of people come in and ask me for advice about funerals and all. I just say, the pre that goes back to the pre-planning. Talk, you know, when the time comes, call a few, find out what the costs are. If they're going to charge you to fill out the app, because they might charge you to fill out an application for our cemetery. Well, why do that? You, I'll send it to you and you can fill it out and send it right to me. The other thing I'll say is our website, it's nhsvc.com. We have links to the National Archives. So if you can't find your DD-214, you can go right to the National Archives, fill out a, some paperwork, and they'll send you a copy of your any military paperwork that you have. If there's if there's really a problem, you can come to our offices. Sometimes we can locate uh, your mm. retirement paperwork. Because I think that's a, frankly, I think a lot of people don't do it because they can't find their 214 or they're not sure. Check with us. We have ways of tr trying to find that stuff. And we will do the best we can to get the paperwork required to make you eligible. So for the, for the process in general, I know that uh, sometimes there's unique situations. But in general, um, what services is it that... Uh, you guys will provide? Mm -hmm. And then what types of things does the family actually have to think about? Like, I, I'm assuming I don't have to worry about a burial flag. I don't have to worry about honors. I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. But um, generally, what kind of things should I be thinking about as a family enters this process? That's a great question. Thanks for asking. Um, so what we do is we, it's a 20-minute committal service that we do at the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. So 
We don't do funerals. We don't do memorial service. This is the end. This is only 20 minutes to inter those remains. That 20 minutes typically for a veteran consists of military honors, and then the, the which includes the taps and the flag fold and presentation. It does not include a firing detail, typically. Sometimes the Army and the Air Force can provide a firing detail for certain, those who are authorized retirees, certain ranks. But I tell most people, don't count on firing details. There's just not enough folks, and so it's not an automatic. If you want a firing detail, you can often get it through the, the American Legion or the VFW. Various veteran service organizations will provide those. That is not typically part of the honors at the veteran cemetery. So it's a 20 minute service, military honors. And then if you want clergy or family wants to speak, we are very open to all those things. So those are really all the things. And the other thing you need to think of, and we will send this in advance, is what you want on the headstone. So the headstone marker, the niche marker has th personal lines. So on the headstone marker, it's 45 characters to just say whatever you want about that, vet that, that person. And it's kind of interesting. I encourage you, you go to a veteran cemetery, walk around sometime and read the headstones. There's there's often funny little anecdotes and you can learn a lot about who's interred there. And what I tell people is every headstone's a story. And just that little 45 character sometimes will spark something and then you might want to learn something more about that. We have we have we have some folks at the veteran cemetery who are amazing Olympians and, and heroes from every war. I, I mean, it's well, recent wars, we, we didn't open until 1997. Uh, but there's just so many incredible stories. Now, do you guys do, when you say memorial service, graveside or chapel? Great question. We do both, both, uh, but it's one or the other at, at our cemetery. Okay. So if you want it, I would say probably 90% of our services are at the graveside. Uh, obviously when the weather's lousy, there's I was gonna always- say, even in February? <laughs> uh, yes, honestly, yes. Even when the weather's loud, but you can schedule graveside and it turns out that the weather's terrible that day, you can move it into the chapel. When we So we schedule burials Monday through Friday, only during the week, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the hour. So we have, you can schedule any hour between nine and three, depending. For full casket burials, we only do those between 10 and two because it takes time for us to get those. We, we don't dig the, the grave until that morning. So we need the time to get that done. But yeah, any hour. And then once, w w if you do it in the chapel, you can't go to the graveside though. We don't allow right. both. You okay. can either be at the graveside or you can be in the chapel, but not both. But the chapel's always available. So I what I encourage folks to do, if you think you want to have it at the graveside, schedule it for the graveside. If the weather's lousy that day, just we can move it into the chapel. Nobody else will be there. There's only one service going on at the cemetery at a given time. We never have two going on at once. Does the staff or yourself uh, actually work with families that are looking to bury them, their loved one, their veteran, not at the veteran cemetery, but at a cemetery that's outside of there? And so they're they're looking for answers to questions about, you know, memorial markers or presidential certificates or yeah. getting a flag or any of that kind of stuff. Are, are you guys a resource that they can reach out to, to get some of those questions answered? I would like to think that we're a resource for any veteran. Part of the, part of why our organization is structured the way we are, Department of Military Affairs and Veteran Services, is I'm part of that, is I'm a public facing part of it. We're a veteran cemetery. Anybody can walk in and visit. If we're open, you can come right in. So the answer to your question is if you're a veteran, you have a question, you can come by the cemetery and ask, and we'll do the best we can to help you. And people call all the time about, I buried my father in this cemetery. How do I get this? And we will always do our best to point them in the right direction, help them out, get them what they need. Because our mission is to support veterans and their families. And it's not just veterans and their families who want to be buried in the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. It's any veteran, any family member, anywhere. Uh, and so to the extent that we can, we will always answer, help answer those questions. Yeah, we'll point them in the right direction. We might even help them with the paperwork or get that stuff done for sure. Because again, it's about getting veterans and their family members the benefits that they've earned rightly. Uh, so, Sean, thanks so much for making the drive down. Join us on the sit rep. Uh, to all you folks out there in the audience, if you're looking for phone numbers, web links, any of the kind of information that Sean just got done talking about, we'll have that in the video description below. So be sure to check that out. And again, thanks for being here, Sean. Appreciate it. Thanks, fellas. Hey, folks, connecting with your benefits is our primary mission, and the sit rep is providing more options than ever. Subscribe to our free email newsletter, subscribe to our audio podcast channel, or subscribe to our content on YouTube. For details and links, check out the description below.